Hello Year 10, um, welcome to this week's um, home learning tasks for the week beginning the 6th of July. Um, this week we are continuing our topic of waves and we're looking at the subject of the EM or electromagnetic spectrum. Um, this video is just going to run through some of the key concepts and outline the tasks for you this week and then the, all of the information will be uploaded including this PowerPoint to go for schools and to teams for you. Okay, so let's just run through what we're going to look at. Um, first is a just a short starter video, which is looks at how um, how infrared radiation was discovered, the experiments that went into that. So just as an introduction to the topic, um, you can follow that YouTube link. Uh, you can stop the pause the video now and go and find that um, link that I've posted and just watch that short video to introduce you to the, this week's topic. Okay, so moving on to our first task is looking at the key concepts and you're going to need to make some notes in your um, book for this. So um, just a few bits and pieces of information first of all. So electromagnetic waves um, are electric and magnetic disturbances that transfer energy from one place to another. Now if you remember what we've been talking about with waves, they are involved in the transfer of energy, so sound or light or other forms of, of energy. Um, so electromagnetic waves do exactly that, but they and they all travel at the same speed, so 300 million meters per second, okay, incredibly fast waves. They are transverse waves, so they're an example of transverse waves, and they are able to travel through a vacuum. That's really important, okay, it means they can travel through space because the electromagnetic waves, um, a lot of them um, either come through the sun or they go into space and transfer um, across vast areas, um, vast distances through space. Okay, so this is what the electromagnetic spectrum looks like. Okay, so if we, it covers all the way from radio waves on the far left hand side there, which have, as you can see, a low frequency and a very long wavelength. Okay, through through the visible light spectrums, which is what you, uh, the, the, the visible light that we can see, all the way up through to gamma rays. And gamma rays have a very short wavelength and a very high frequency. Um, in terms of what sizes we're talking about here, okay, so the wavelengths um, sizes there are in centimeters, and you can see that gamma rays are absolutely tiny, the size of the, an atomic nuclei and the wavelength increases gradually until it reaches the size almost of pretty much of a building okay when it comes to a radio wave so several meters um, across now you're going to need to take this bit of information down okay so the electromagnetic spectrum looks like this it starts from the left with radio waves then it goes through microwaves infrared visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma rays. Okay, so R-M-I-V-U-X-G is our order for our electromagnetic spectrum. As I said, the as we go from radio waves to gamma rays, we are increasing the frequency of the waves. If you remember, we've been talking about wave frequency. And as we go from uh, gamma rays back to radio waves, we increase the wavelength, so the wavelength gets larger. Okay, so as the frequency increase is increases, so does the energy of the wave. That's an important aspect as well to make a note of, that gamma rays have a much higher energy than radio waves. Okay, now what I'd like you to do first of all is just to come up with a mnemonic to help you remember this order. Some sort of little rhyme that will help you use the letters R, M, I, V, U, X, G and come up with some kind of rhyme that will help you remember that order okay so that's your first task you can find one or you can make one up yourself okay the second task is the main learning for this week okay um, and this is really going to be a, a, an information gathering task so I'd like you to produce a poster or a spidergram diagram or a table or a mime up or any other creative idea that you can come up with which covers each of the seven parts of the EM spectrum. Okay, um, I'm going to provide for you some extra information. There will be some separate slides, okay, attached to uh, Teams and to Go for Schools, which detail some of the information needed for each of those 
parts of the EM spectrum, but you are able to do your own research as well to add to this and to build it. So for each part, as a minimum, you need to include the wavelength, you need to inc include some of the sources, um, where it is, where, where, do, where does this um, EM, this wave come from, the sort of interactions that it has, and that'll be a bit clearer on the slides that I provide, and at least a couple of uses for them, okay? You can add more than that if you want. You can add pictures, you can add some descriptions, those kind of things. But as a minimum, those are the information you need. OK, once you've done that, the third task I'd like you to do is to looking at, looking at how we understand the EM spectrum a bit more. OK, so um, looking at the data that you've just found, OK, um, look at the patterns and trends, OK, um, look at your as you go along the spectrum. What do you notice about the wavelength? So as we go from radio waves all the way through to gamma rays, what do we notice about the wavelength? What do we notice about the interactions and the penetration of the waves? Okay, so they will um, there'll be differences there. And how does the the amount of penetration that um, the wave can achieve? How does that affect its use? Okay. Um, so that should say task four. So that's just a short part to, to add to your um, f take from your poster. This, this is now looking at some of the fundamental ideas of wave, waves and the wave sp EM spectrum. So I'd just like to have a go at these questions. OK, see if you can have a go at answering some of these questions. OK, I'm not going to go through them, but you'll pause the video now and have a just attempt at whether you can answer these questions or not. OK. Then I'd like to have a go at copying and completing as much of this table as you can using everything you've learnt, okay, from the research that you've done, the information gathering you've done, um, and that kind of thing. So think about the practical applications of different parts of the EM spectrum. You can use your own research to help you. You can go and find out. So as an example at the top there, okay, there's a practical application for infrared, okay. Um, which is that firefighters need to be able to see through smoke to find people and identify hotspots. So they use an object that uses the EM spectrum is their infrared camera. Okay, and the region of the EM spectrum that is used is infrared. So we're trying to fill out this table with an example for each of the different regions of the EM spectrum. You can see that they're listed there. Okay, um, and some objects are provided, but you need to come up with some others. OK, so I've given you some hints in this table. I've given you some kind of bits and pieces to build around, some scaffolding to help you. But you can research, you can um, add as much as you can to that table. OK, the final task is just one short exam question. OK, just for you to have a go at just consolidating everything you've done. Um, and this is the question. OK, so it's two parts, just two marks. OK, the diagram shows six of the seven types of wave that make up the electromagnetic spectrum, which is missing. OK, and which of the following waves has the most energy? So I'd like you to attempt this question with all your notes closed. OK, just to see what you've retained. Obviously, there isn't a lot there for you to, to do um, in terms of the exam question, but just to see if you can remember those key bits. OK, now I'd like you to send me any work you do so you're um, poster or whatever it is you've done, um, your completed questions and table, particularly your findings, and this exam question. If you could submit that, ideally through Teams would be great. If you struggle with that, then do send me an email. And I look forward to seeing your work. Okay, any questions, then do give me a shout either on email or contact me via the Teams channel. And I will see you soon.